What's up guys, Dominator1, 2 and 2, and today I got another deck profile for you. Before we get to the deck, I got a little news. Um, the 5k subscriber special is getting postponed a little bit because of the great YouTube subscriber purge of 2016 that happened last night. Pretty much every single YouTube channel lost subscribers because it seems like YouTube decided to get rid of all of the inactive channels. Like I lost 140, Yugi Nono lost like 300, I think Screencasters lost like 70 or something like that. Big pain in the butt because it makes me get a little bit farther away from the 5k mark, which I was really excited to post that music video for you guys. So. Uh, the schedule got switched and I'm making this video tonight instead of the next day and uh, you'll probably get that video tomorrow or the day after that. So anyway guys, let's get started. This is my Aqua Actress Tree Toad deck profile. The first thing you'll notice is there's actually three independent engines in this deck. We have the Frog Engine, the Gradle Engine, and the Aqua Actress Engine. The most important engine, however, is the Frog Engine, even though the majority of the card count is still Aqua Actresses, so I'll still call it that kind of deck. The most important engine of the deck, though, is your Frog Engine, which consists of your three Swap Frog, your two Dupe Frog, and your one copies of Flip Flop Frog and Ronin Toten. Man, I had to record like this like eight times because I kept fucking up Flip Flop. Oh my god. Flip, I'm keeping it in. Basically what you use is you use your Swap Frog to get things out of your hand or your deck and stick it all in the graveyard and then use your Menagerie of Spells to actually get it all back. Pretty much easy, then your Rank 2s are facilitated by your Ronin Toten. The next engine is the Gradle engine. It's a fun little thing. We went with two Gradle Eagles and three Gradle Slime Juniors. We don't tend to make many of the synchros. We actually pretty solely use it as a rank two engine because if you have one in your graveyard, one in your hand, and you normal summon the one in your hand, it'll summon the one from your graveyard, and then it'll summon any of your level twos from your hand. Which so this will jumpstart your other engines. It's actually really, really good. And if you're really, really lucky or really, really good with the deck, you can kind of get some finagling going and you can use your Swap Frog to bounce back the Great Old Slime that you summon so that you can do it again next turn. It's just a lot of fun. And finally, you have the Aqua Actress Engine. It's pretty simple. Three Guppy, three Tetra, and then two of each of the spells. Tetra searches your spells, and then Guppy is kind of a rank two engine or get out a Tetra after summoning a Great Old... I don't know. It, it, you kind of need her just because she kind of facilitates the rank 2s better than anything else, and Tetra seems to be kind of the odd one out, but it does get you your spells. And to round off the monsters, we do have the two Tetsudo Orat Newman, which neither player can special summon monsters with 1800 or more attack, which is a really, really fun little floodgate, and in defense mode with a couple of these down here makes him pretty hard to get rid of, especially when you have him sitting next to Tree Toad. Your spells are pretty simple. You got your surfaces and your salvages to basically make your deck function. And then all the aquarium cards, your stage makes your monsters missable to battle. Set gives you a big attack boost. And then lighting doubles the attack of aqua actress monsters. This one's a little bit less important. You might want to play with these levels. Maybe go to one lighting and three set. I don't know. I went two, two, and two with the one wetlands is like the, the bonus boost, but you can play with it if you want. Then most of the text, one for one, Regeki, you got your Soul Charge and Foolish Burial. These things just kind of facilitate the deck. And then you got your Spell Trap removal with two Double Cyclone and a Twin Twister. This one's actually cool because it lets you pop your Aquarium cards to pop one of their cards, and then when these go to the graveyard, you get to summon an Aqua-type monster from your graveyard, which is really, really cool. You can get back your Tree Toad, for the record. So there's a lot of fun with that. And then our synchros are Trish, Gradle Dragon, Doloran, and uh, Tatsunoko. This thing's kind of fun because with Stage on board, it's actually a little hard to get rid of because it's also unaffected by monster effects. So it's a, it's a little hard to deal with. Um, Doloran's fun because you can bounce all of your spells and you'll just get a massive attack. Gradle Dragon because we can make him once in a while. And then Trish because, again, we can kind of make him once in a while. I find that uh, Ryan and I were making these two more when you stole something from your opponent with Tree Toad, actually. And the piece de resistance of the extra deck, though, is your tree toad. Crumble Logos is also really fun. I actually used it to negate a zombie world uh, a few minutes ago because <laughs> that was actually locking me out for making tree toad. So this is kind of fun. This can negate any face-up card. And then pretty much the only other thing I'd like to talk about is your catch arc. Catch arc is really cool because it can target your tree toad during damage calc to double his attack to 4,400. So that's a really, really useful combo, and I've actually used this to get over some seriously uh, annoying cards that I otherwise would not have had a very good way of getting around. Anyway, it's time to duel. 
All right, this first one's against Red Eyes Black Dragon. I didn't know what he was playing, but I did have a couple of really good spells in hand, so I got my Swap Frog moving and getting stuff out of the deck, which is always really good. Get that Grail Slime set up, get your Rona Toad set up, and then I normal summon Tetsudo Arat Newman because I thought that, you know what, that'll probably lock him out of play and he'll have to do all of his cool stuff main phase two. Turns out he couldn't even do anything main phase one because he was playing red eyes and his only play was red eyes fusion which I completely locked out of play. <laughs> so I'm doing more of the rank two shenanigans going to gachi gachi and cat shark because this thing actually locked me out from playing another turn to or tree toad but whatever who cares cat shark too strong. So he pops my face down double cycle and I didn't really care and when he saw that's what it was he quit. Mmm, mozzarella sticks. Anyway, this next one's against Blue Eyes White Dragon. I didn't quite know what he was playing, obviously, because he it was I went first, and I didn't draw very well, so I figured I would just put Newman in defense mode with an aquarium stage and kind of see what he does. He did get rid of the stage, but when as soon as I saw that he was playing Blue Eyes White Dragon, I had a feeling that he wouldn't be able to play anyway, because I don't think he has anything to get over this. So just get that stage back, set both of my double cyclones, I had the unfortunate luck of drawing into both. And uh, he set a card, so I was like, you know what, I probably should get rid of that. So let's get another one of the things, and play that, play that, and then I'll have these target each other, which is kind of funny, just so I can kill his two, his two spells. And it was a mirror force, so that was, a, that was pretty good. And uh, swing for 900 massive damage. Too broke. But he still can't actually do anything, so uh, just kind of keep going. Woot! Swing for that massive 700. We got 15, that's not so bad. Still can't play. Newman too strong. Now, I don't think he knew exactly how uh, my aquarium cards worked, but even if he didn't, he's, this isn't going to help him anyway, because they're unaffected by monster effects. You can't negate my attack, and I'm just going to do a bunch of damage to you. Ooh, game. All right, another Red-Eyes Black Dragon duel. This will be the last one. <laughs> I played, like, six or seven duels, and it was either against Scrub -tier Deck or Red-Eyes Black Dragon. Everyone's on a Red-Eyes kick. I don't know why, so here you go. You got two Red-Eyes duels. Um, I didn't quite know what he was doing again, because I keep going first, which this deck does actually pretty well. Going first is not, turns out isn't a very good, uh, a very good strategy, but nowadays with this deck, it's uh, fast enough, you can kind of do it, get some serious lock on board, and then your opponent's kind of screwed. But, uh, he played the Red Eyes Fusion, and I negated it, and, uh, because he played Red Eyes Fusion, he couldn't actually do anything. I'm like, alright, so, on my turn, he decided to play a big old Red Eyes, Red Eyes Darkness Metal, oh, that's a big dragon. Too bad I don't care, Cat Shark. Ooh, too freaking broke. Oh, here we go. Let's make something else. Oh, let's make another toad. That'll be funny. Smack. Smack. All right. Your move, Yuki boy. Let's, uh, let's get out of, let's get out another frog, though. Ooh, mill. More mills. Mills for days. Claw of Hermos. Uh, sure? All right, guys. I hope you liked the deck profile. It was a lot of fun to make. Me and Ryan have been testing it for, like, two days straight trying to get it ready. But uh, I feel like this is kind of where we both settled. It really works very, very well. Um, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Like, comment, subscribe. Let's get that 5K back. And remember, guys, if you don't troll the meta, who will? I'll see you guys next time.